hell did that happen? I feel like I need to go for a walk. Okay. area anyway I'm at the start of the orange line this is Park Avenue and McLaughlin and the reason I am out here or rather I guess starting here is it's almost kind of a continuation of a video I did like a little over a year ago where I went back and spent the day in Fairview a town pretty far away from where I've lived since then but off to the east of Portland, kind of heading towards the Columbia River Gorge, Troutdale, that area. Because from about the, I really never fully got an answer on exactly when we moved to Fairview, but it was somewhere around the time I was one, I don't know, around the time I turned one. I may have been one and a half. I wanna say it was early 1987, I really don't know. So from around that time up to the age of almost seven, we lived in, Fairview and October 25th 1992 was the first night I spent living in Oak Grove and I lived in the Oak Grove area um, from that date up until pretty much May 2009 so I spent about 16 and a half years living in the Oak Grove area so I spent all that time looking at all the memories of my past in Fairview and now we're moving on to the next phase of my life from the age of almost seven to about 23, 23 and a half. And we're starting right here. There's part of the bike path. They've, they've run all these extra paths through to try to make this big connecting path that pretty much runs like, I guess like 26 miles or something. You could run a marathon on this thing. But this used to be at least starting up here across the street this was the old trolley trail where the trolley lines would run so that's where i'm gonna start i'm gonna run i'm gonna book it oh god i'm gonna get hit i'm gonna die no i'm good i'm good but yeah there used to be a rundown like mako business here i forget they were like involved in cars or something like that but anyway yeah it used to be this was all kind of overcome by trees and this was just this tiny little dirt path that kind of squeezed out to here and I used to ride my bike up and down this trail before they officially paved it and it was treacherous it was the number of times I thought I was going to hit a bump flop to the side flip over and land on my head was numerous but obviously times have changed and now it's like an actual pathway I'm going to use this to start inkling my way uh, into Oak Grove. Technically, like, the town of Milwaukee begins just right over there. And kind of from here to, like, the Jennings Lodge area, it's kind of just generally considered Oak Grove. Some parts of it are called Oak Lodge. I never really figured out the distinction there. It's just, it's, to me, it's just all Oak Grove. I consider myself as someone who most of my growing up occurred in Oak Grove. And it's so cool that, uh, because again, this used to be where the streetcar, the trolley, used to come through. So you have a lot of these streets that kind of just run to here and end now because they don't run all the way through to McLaughlin, AKA Old Highway N99 on the other side of the Elks. I used to come here with my friend and exercise and weightlift because his family were Elks. And it was, that was all down in the basement. It was kind of creepy, but really cool at the same time. But yeah, so here's where Evergreen Street starts. And this is right where the Evergreen 
station would have been. There would have been a little kind of the comparable to a uh, bus, the, a bus shelter. So it would have been a trolley shelter. Man, I, I remember my parents telling me, because you got to realize, I mean, again, we moved to Fairview when I was very little, still totally an infant. So, you know, my whole life was Fairview. And my best friend Guy, we hung out almost every day when we were in school. And the weird thing is, you know, my parents sat me down and told me, like, I'm sorry, but we're moving. And I was like, no, no. Yeah, approximate location, trolley trail. I mean probably more like approximate location of the trolley line it's not really the approximate i mean like the trail might have been here but they put it here that's not really approximate it's still right on here's silver springs road it goes up yonder but yeah what's so weird is my best friend guy who lived in the same apartment complex as me they moved the same weekend that we did um i talked to him on the phone a few times he came to my seventh birthday, like less than a month after we moved. Um, I haven't seen him in the flesh since 1990, my seventh birthday, 1992. Have no idea what happened to him. No idea where he's living, if he's living. Um, so yeah, it was a little culture shock, but you kind of, in addition to like leaving everything you love or know, there's like kind of an excitement about experiencing something new. And I definitely felt like I had that. Uh, Cause I remember starting out at a new school and that's always frightening. And here I am this super introverted kid who's not even quite seven yet. Um, but I adjusted. I enjoyed elementary school at Oak Grove, the old Oak Grove elementary, which is now gone. We'll pass by that later. That was easier for me to deal with than my current first grade class. So that adjustment was easy. I also feel like there were two other kids like my exact age that lived in my apartment complex and I became friends with them really quickly. So I think that definitely took a little, a little ease off of it. I mean, all I really remember, I remember pretty well the moment my mom set me down. It was like, we're moving. And I was like, no. Oh, but I don't really remember thinking about it that much. I even remember our stuff getting packed up and us moving and looking up at the top of the lot and them moving stuff. And I don't know, maybe it kind of felt surreal to me at the time, which if it did feel surreal, I wouldn't have known how to express myself about it. And it just, it was done. I also think I liked that our, the apartment we moved into, it may have just been that it was empty when we first saw it, but it it always felt so much larger than the one we lived in in Fairview. So I probably like that too. What is this? Is this a, a castle? That is so cool. And there's like an owl in it. That's awesome. It's like just made out of God knows what. That's awesome. I like it. I'm already getting, I'm already getting like Route 66 time stuff is this route 66 i would have thought it was wider and longer and less traveled and i think we're getting close to courtney which is where i want to veer off we're going to be right in the hub of where i lived well hello you so when i was a kid we went to oak grove i went to oak grove elementary the old oak grove elementary that got demoed uh, June 2020. I really wanted to go inside and see it. They were going to have a tour of it, but then COVID happened. So this was, this is now Oak Grove Elementary, but this was always, when I was a kid, this was North Oak Grove and it was a really tiny elementary school. It's a lot bigger now because it's encompassing more kids, but yeah, they closed my elementary school down just a couple years after I left because it became the new site of the new urban high school, which they demoed my old school to build the new urban high school. But I remember coming up here with my dad and playing basketball. It's like my only real connection to this place. And this house, I know this house, God, there's another house. Where the hell did this thing come from? Cause this house was always sitting on this property by itself. And this is kind of 
I want to say, like, uh, people have written about this house. Like, it's kind of a mystery. Or, like, there's elements of its past that are kind of unknown. And it just sat here on this big lot by itself. But now there's this thing crammed in next to it, which, I mean, no shocker nowadays. But, yeah, there's always been, like, a interesting mystique about this house. I don't even remember what... I know it has a name, because a lot of names, houses are named after, like, whoever originally built them or if some famous person lived there. But, anyway, we're coming out... Yeah, see, that's supposed to be Oak Grove Elementary back there. And yet the sign says we're still almost half a mile from Oak Grove. But of course they measure based on like a certain point in town. Like I know people will say Portland is such and such distance away, but they measure that based on like down the downtown area or sometimes even the airport. So it's not really reliable. Okay, so this is Courtney Avenue. And I live just a little ways off that direction, but I'm gonna walk up along Courtney just briefly. Arista, that's right, this is Arista Drive, which Arista Drive is a very bizarre street. It goes here for a while, then it just ends, but then it restarts along the trolley trail again. It's, it's a goofy thing. I'll get to it when I get over there if I do go down the, uh, kind of more cool part of Arista. Oh my God. There's where the bodies are buried. Or I guess not necessarily buried, but left. Who would want to get premier property next to this? A Stanford Apartments. I'm pretty sure there was a girl who I was in class with and she had a brother who was like a year ahead of us. And they moved here the year Forrest Gump came out. And the brother's name was Forrest. And every time he got off the bus, someone stuck their dumb head out the window and yelled, run, Forrest, run. That poor kid. It didn't seem to bother him, but you never know. Hello, vehicle. Yeah, so over in this, next to this thin house, this little lot here at the corner, there's just some bushes. There used to be a church there, I found out randomly. Uh, you know, there was a church right there. I found there's like a picture of it put on a local historical site. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. What tarnation? Oh, there's a bunch of new houses being built down there. I'm guessing some of the same is happening here. It's like there's like an old kind of barn structure getting effed up. I'm, I'm just briefly going off my beat. I mean, I'm only going off by a couple of blocks. So I'm trying to get to Laurie Avenue, which is this next street down here, because just around the corner, um, there's a house where a horrible crime happens. I'm not going to get into the details because I don't know. I'm doing a video about that, and I don't know which will end up getting posted first, that or this. So I don't want to give up a bunch of details. But, yeah, this is Laurie Avenue that I'm approaching. And, like, the third house down on the west side of the street horrible crime happened so i just did a quick pass by the house um of course it's like the one house on the street that has like the very stern no trespassing sign and obviously again when it comes to private residences i don't like to linger around or get too much i don't want to impede on their privacy too much obviously i'm not going onto the property by the way i do not like this this road used to be so covered in trees and open and now they're just ramming these things in here so i'm pretty sure i can't wrap around so i'm gonna have to go back the way i came but I mean, while we're in the area, since I am briefly veering off, if I'm correct, God, everything, I think it's down this street, Denny Street, maybe, no, because that's this, it might be down, it might be down here, it might be down this side of the street. I don't remember any of this either, but it's, because I think eventually that goes into the old folks' home. And I think, does this wrap around? Yeah, so, if you go down this wrap, or it just wraps around and goes down to the river. There's a place called River Villa Park down there. If you go just around down there, you can see the old bridge, uh, railroad bridge crossing the street. I'm not going down there because it's not really pertaining to my story. And it's a lot of downhill, which means a lot of uphill to do afterwards. But that's where the first find was. The documentary I did a while back, the uh, 
Torso murder case of 1946, also known as the Oak Grove Jane Doe, the Wisdom Light murder. It has a lot of different names, but the initial remains, I believe in April 1946, were found in the river near the railroad bridge, so right up by that park. So it was right down that hill where all that happened. But again, I'm not going down there. Just, you know, that's what got me into really wanting to do that documentary was the fact that this big murder case literally started. A lot of the remains were happened in Oak Grove. Like it's referred to as the Oak Grove Jane Doe. So I'm like, well, I have to do a video about this now. All right, success. Got what I needed, didn't get shot. So, on Lori, I'm gonna turn back onto Courtney and start getting into the, uh, the meat, the meat of the town. Sounds very aggressive. Let's get some of that Oak Grove meat. First things first, this is more of a precautionary situation than anything, but there is the potential I may stumble onto some people that I'd rather not see, namely people I used to go to my church and my dad so hopefully the long hair that i don't think any of them know i have the mask and the glasses will be enough if i need to kind of obscure my i'm actually gonna be getting really close uh near the end of this video to my church like honestly within like a block so and like <laughs> if i encounter anybody from my church or especially my dad oh this log's gonna go south real quick. <laughs> and so Oak Grove does have kind of a working class vibe to it. The further down by the river you get, the larger the houses, the more expensive the property. It's pretty ritzy, this side of River Road, which this is River Road, the crossing street right here. So once you get that side, this side of it closer, it's pretty ritzy in parts. Uh, but pretty much anywhere on the other side, of River Road and even parts this side. It's very working class. You got a lot of simple one-story homes, the occasional like really cool old house from like the 1890s. Uh, but you know, a lot of apartments, a lot of simple structures, pretty middle of the road. Um, I think economically speaking, or maybe just a little below average. I don't, I don't have those numbers on me. Um, actually, I'm going to want to cross the street because I get I have to go way too far down to go that way again. So actually, yeah, I'm going to cross. I'm going to go down to Lee Avenue, I guess. I guess I'm going to come in on the back side of where I used to live. But whatever. The objective is to get there. So I'm on Courtney, but I'm about to veer off down good old Lee Avenue. The part of Lee Avenue I actually don't know that well. I lived on the, my old elementary school was just a couple, like two blocks down, and I lived on the other side of that on Lee Avenue, and the school property cuts right through this street, so there's like a little stretch of Lee here, then there's nothing where the school is, and then Lee restarts on the other side of the school. Uh, but I really didn't know this side of Lee Avenue that well. I never really went down this way that much. Even though I literally lived right around the corner from it. I just never had any incentive to. Now here's uh, something that I'm both, I'm both kind of excited but also kind of sad about. Is you know, they demoed my school. My old elementary school. Oak Grove Elementary was built I believe in 1924. And it was demoed in... 2020 so it was almost 100 years old i understand it was really old it's probably gonna need to get replaced soon no matter what but you hate to see both the elementary school you went to as well as a school with that historical value go away i have no idea it's been almost two years so i would assume considerable work has been done on the new school if it hasn't been completed i don't know how much COVID affected that but i know my elementary school, I'm pretty sure it was demo June 2020. So I have no idea what it's going to look like. It's probably going to look like all these new schools, just super boxy and just dystopian looking, but I'm, I'm still interested. It's an ugly ass like collection. Yeah, of course there's orange all over it. They have to put orange. Why do they have to put orange in every goddamn building? Oh, hello kitty. Meow. Yeah, he's like, no, not today. 
I guess in a weird way, they're almost kind of making it look like the old high school. So I guess I can kind of, oh my God, this got torched y'all. What the hell happened here? Half this apartment complex got torched. Jeez. Well, that sucks. Yeah, that's like two full units, man. All right, yeah, so here's where my elementary school used to be. There's actually, this used to be a hill that you could run down over here. Of course, they had to put a wall there because they got to ruin any happiness that children have. But yeah, this is Maple Street I'm crossing. I guess they kind of left it alone up there. That's kind of the same. But yeah, there was um, right through here, kind of where those two little trees are. It's the lump. That's where the big gym was, where I used to play basketball, youth league basketball, all that good stuff. Uh, and yeah, so the gym was here and then more of the old school was up over here where this, it's so weird. There were swings here. This was just kind of very poorly paved. In fact, there was little lumps in the pavement and I tripped over one of those and that's how I broke my left wrist in fourth grade, right by the big gym over here. But yeah, that's, very small. I would have, well, maybe it's bigger on the other side, but yeah, just, you know, pretty much what I expected this dump to look like. I love how the field looks exactly the same. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrap around, check that stuff out, then kind of see this from the front. And then again, sorry, there's a bit of a breeze. I lived where Lee Avenue begins again, right through there. So I'm going to go all around, check out the old, the main Oak Grove drag, and then go down that street for the first time in a couple years. So we're coming back to Arista Drive. I'm on Maple Street right now. Arista Drive is this crossing road right ahead of us. So Lee Avenue is behind us. I'm walking east. So Arista and Lee run north and south. And I'm walking east on Maple, which ones runs east and west. I know that this is a fairly like famous as far as old homes in Oak Grove. Uh, I always remember seeing it because the big field where we'd play like football and whatnot is right on the other side of this house. But there's a few uh, bicyclists. Okay. But there's a few kind of old structures here. And right up here is Arista and Oak Grove Boulevard, which is kind of like, that was like, this was like the main, you know, every little town has its main intersection pretty sure this was it yeah but I love this house if you look at like the general structure and then you look through here and this is I love how this field doesn't look any different it's just all beat to hell this is encroaching more and more but yeah that the fencing back there that would have been like the baseball diamond that's been there <laughs> since before I moved here and there was two really beat up old soccer posts and there's the new urban high I mean in a weird way, it does kind of remind me of the elementary school because the elementary school was very gray. But I just, I knew they were going to make it all like orangey and stuff. I'm just, I guess it could be worse. It could always be a little bit worse. And here's the old, this is the old tavern. That I don't even think it's functioning as a tavern anymore. I think it used to be a tavern. Um, pretty popular in the area. I want to say it recently closed. People were kind of bummed about that. But, uh, you know, progress moves forward and then takes two steps back. So I don't know. I don't really know what this building. I remember this apartment complex over here, though. These windows on the back side of it, they were always getting busted out by us elementary school kids. Like, just shenanigans in this field. Those Their windows would get broken all the time. Footballs, softballs. Oh, my God. Even this is here. This is, this is childhood memories for me. I gotta step down because this hasn't changed. I didn't, and it's still just this little spot here. This was even more closed up when you, we were kids and we'd want to come here after school to do stuff. What the heck is this? It's a, somebody's handprint. 
It says like heart Izzy, and it's just been like left here. I don't know. Man. But my, they haven't done any. Yeah, I wonder. I don't think those are the old soccer posts because I want to say they were just like posts that were buried into the ground. This has not changed. I remember coming here in like the late 90s when I was in elementary school playing baseball on this field and there'd be like four of us. So there was like no outfielders. And I'm pretty sure these have been here longer than I, uh, these benches are probably older than I am. I'm astonished that these are still, I'm happy. I and mean, who knows how long these have been here. Um, and then there's another one and it's all, it's all, this is all lumpy and all dilapidated, but I still, it makes me kind of love it. This has got literally this big ass sticker bush coming out of the middle of it. Nobody cares. They've just been abandoned, forgotten. It's a thing of beauty. There's always been these sticker bushes through here. Always. <sighs> this grass is an abomination. God, I just, I wonder how long these have been here. I can't even see where they end down there anymore. Uh, even these, like the fencing is newer, but these posts that the fences are put on. Those have been here for a minute. Can I what the? Yeah. Oh, I think that's probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming that goes down and over that. Yeah. So I move that. So I'm going to go. Oh, guys. Don't trip on that. All right. Enough nostalgia. Even though this, this just warms my heart and makes me feel like I'm 12 again. It's like the closest I ever came to like, cause I didn't really hang out with my friends a lot outside of school. So there was rare moments where we do stuff like this after. And here's this cool old Oak Grove Shoe Emporium building that's just kind of been closed for, never really took notice of it before, despite its urbex value. Uh, so there used to be, this is where like the Oak Grove Pharmacy was back in the day, obviously not here anymore. But I love how on the side of this building, there's this really cool mural. And you get to see like, cause I'm getting, I think the um, pharmacy was here. So it was like right up against this building. So this is like previously unexposed brick. And then yeah, Oak Grove Shoe Emporium up there. I got some of this when I explored through here uh, when I was first starting my channel and but I, uh, the video was like 12 minutes long. It was just, it started and it ended. Welcome home to Historic Oak Grove.
yeah, so this is like the main, historically the main drag. Um, I don't know. Maybe the building's not really being used for anything. <laughs> These definitely were not here when I was a kid. Because, yeah, here's the old bought the tavern sign. I mean, this it wasn't even that old. This was put in like after I moved here. Um, so I'm pretty sure there was an older sign. Okay, so I need to get across. Actually, it looks like they left the primary wing of the elementary school here, which I think is, I'm pretty sure that, yeah, the primary wing is still here. So they only replaced the, the main building of the high school, which is right here, but down there, that's the, um, yeah, that's, it was the primary wing. That's where special ed and then kindergarten through third grade would do their classes in this little building here that's still there. And then this was the intermediate building where fourth through sixth graders lived. <laughs> lived. <laughs> I hope not. Went to class. And right up there were those. That's where Mr. Young's class would have been if the old building was still here. Miss Laminac would have been over here. Again, comparing the old to the new. And I love that there's like a window. There's like a business here now. It just, like, and I know that this is here, that it's been here a while. It just blows me away that there's a business in this house. The house is in pretty good shape. There was a guy named Ed. Everybody loved Ed. He was this old guy that smoked this really fruity tobacco stuff. And he lived in the house that was here that's been rebuilt. And it was falling apart. It was a shack. It was listing to the side. But Ed was, he was this old guy that wore his fisherman hat. He was the best. Oh, wow. Well, this certainly looks different. But yeah, I, I thought they were demoing the whole thing. But the primary wing is still here. And I gotta walk through here because it's Saturday. So this is so bizarre to me. Because it used to be... I think the school went all the way out to, like the building that was here went out to like at least about here. Cause there was just this, this tiny little walkway here between the main building and the primary wing. I'm so, I'm so glad this, this was built later too. So, and this is, this is something of historic value that they kept here. Cause these were all around the school. So they, they were nice enough to keep one of these pillars cause they probably date back and yeah. I'm literally, like, right about now, I'm walking over the cafe. The cafeteria was slightly underground. I'm walking, like, right over where the cafeteria was. It's heartbreaking, but I'm glad this is here. This brings back memories. And yeah, so there's, like, kind of a mini gymnasium over here. And yeah, the main entrance to the school would have been right over here and you'd go in through that door and right there you'd buy tickets, your lunch tickets. Kind of right about in this general area. And then you'd come out and walk across and this was you know, the main door that you'd go through to get into the primary wing. There's a door on the other side that takes you out. And this was a soccer field. We'd play soccer here. Oh my God, does it look any different in here? Not from what I remember. And I'm wondering, dead ahead, that might be the door to Miss Chamoff's class, my third grade teacher. I'm not dead certain, but I'm gonna go around. And yeah, there was like, yeah, right here, there was like a little stairway that would take you down to the intermediate area, kind of between the main building and the big gym. Yeah, and this, they've kind of, yeah, so everything like here, here over has kind of stayed the same. I mean, this is completely different from when I was a kid, but this is how it looked. Yeah, yeah, so here's the door. When we had recess, we'd all shoot down this hallway, run out here and go ballistic. So this will be like a full view down the hallway all the way to the end of the building. Oh my God. It doesn't look remote. Even this old, the old wood paneling on the walls is still here. It doesn't look remotely different. And there's still a restroom right over here. That's why that fountain's there. And so, yeah, you can look all the way down. There's a doorway down at the end. It was this long hallway. And yeah, the computer lab was like over here. And Miss Chamoff's classroom was right over here.
That's, that is nostalgia. I don't know if I, can I get out this way? Uh, I guess it looks like I have to go out. This wasn't here. There was two beat up basketball hoops here and that was it. And this pavement didn't go that far. And we had some cool stuff. There's like a little pile of rocks down there that, you know, the kind of more edgy kids used to hang out with. And if I wanted to be an edgy kid, I'd hang out with them. But I don't know. It's so funny. These houses look so foreign to me, but I spent three years of my life staring out windows at these couple of houses from here. So yeah, either right here or right there. One of those was Miss Chamov's class. Then there was Miss Seiler was here. And then the next one down to the end was Miss Gary. Miss Gary was my first and second grade teacher. And yeah, we were pretty, I'm pretty sure he was right. Whatever classroom this is. Just, just crazy. I, I have to. It's a weekend. There's not going to be a bunch of kids in there. This hasn't changed. I remember this being here. So I'm pretty sure this is my first and second grade classroom. Oh my god. I mean, it doesn't look remotely the same, but it's, it's a classroom. This is where the amateur historian went for his first and second grade classes. Just, wow. I know you can't see the front of the classroom too well, but yeah. October 1992 through to June. Oh my God, I almost fell. To 1994. All my schooling was in that room right there. Oh my God. Memories. Oh, the memories. And then here is the daycare center across the street that I went to mostly just for first and second grade. And it was, um, it was, it was a mixed bag. It's kind of shitty at times and then kind of okay at other times. I'm really glad. I really wanted to do this on a weekday so I could actually walk up to my school and video my old daycare center without, you know, there being 50 bajillion kids. Now it's a preschool and a daycare. Cause it was not a preschool. It was just a daycare. These were not here when I lived here. There's a lot of stuff kind of peppered in, but yeah, this is, you wouldn't tell by the way it looks now, but this was like the main drag Oak Grove right here. The drag. Right, sorry, I had to pull out an old book and check some old school pictures because I actually couldn't remember at first if it was third or fourth grade when this happened. I think it was spring 1995. I want to say it was like April. It might even been May. I, again, I, I'm, you know, there could be some false memories in here. I'm pulling up something that happened, you know, 25 years ago. I was only, what, nine years old. I was in... Um, I was in third grade, Miss Chamoff's class, and we had two Ryans, and I remember that was so, because there wasn't really a lot of kids that went to the school, so for two kids in one classroom to have the same name was rare. That being said, when I moved to Oak Grove and was in first grade, there were two other Stevens, and I remember one Ryan, he had, he, he was almost kind of, if there was a squirrel with all black fur, that's what he reminded me of, his appearance. He had kind of puffy black hair that almost kind of had the same look as like squirrel pelt and he was just kind of a goofy a goofy kid and I almost kind of get the vibes that he didn't have a very good home and he was kind of just I don't know I mean granted the kid was only nine but even for a nine-year-old he just wasn't very structured and it was, it was obvious that he was kind of an erratic kid and it just you got vibes that he that things weren't great at home and Ryan lived in this big old apartment house that was just off the main drag of Oak Grove. So you've got Oak Grove Boulevard here. The school's here. The street I live on is Lee Avenue. Next street down is Arista. And then just this side of Arista, there's a line of businesses. 
and right behind it is this big apartment house. It just towered right behind this row of small businesses. I almost get the vibe that there was probably a bunch of houses like that just lined up their way back in the day, um, a little ways back from the street. Um, and by, you know, by the 90s when I moved there, there was just this one house there. There was probably enough people living in there that they didn't tear it down. They didn't really need to. They just built these businesses. And then right in the middle, there was a skinny little alleyway that you walked between those businesses up to the house. So it was just one of those massive apartment houses. You know, you could, you could literally, it was the size of like three actual houses. And it was just there, you know, I never paid much attention to it. It was just this big house behind this, the buy right that I used to go to all the time. And Ryan lived in one of the units there and he was in my third grade class. Again, it's probably April, May, 1995. And something happened. All of a sudden the principal showed up. Um, I loved our principal. She was a really nice lady, but she was really intense. And she suddenly comes to the door, kind of quietly knocks on it and you know is tr trying to get as little attention as possible goes up to my teacher and is like saying hey like can I can I I need to take Ryan away for a second and Ryan leaves the classroom you know for about I, I don't remember you know it could have been 10 minutes could have been 30 minutes I don't know and Ryan eventually comes back to the classroom and he's got this big smile on his face and he's chuckling and people are like what happened and he's like my home is on, my house is on fire. My house is burning down. Isn't that wild? And I, he, he was like laughing about it. It was a big joke to him. Again, you know, I don't think he had the greatest background. And yeah, that's what happened. We all, um, we couldn't see it from our classroom because we were like, the house would be over here and we were in a building like this and our windows were facing this way. But I remember, um, briefly, um, being because we we would be let out for like our last recess of the day and I remember going out on the recess and even though one of the bigger school buildings blocked out our view of the house you could see the smoke going up in the air and I'm surprised they didn't just keep us in the school um, but yeah that's what happened that house was a freaking blaze everybody in town you know saw the smoke and the streets were lined with people and that didn't happen in Oak Grove um, and but the, see that's the thing is Oak Grove was, uh, it was kind of, a, and it kind of passed as we got, came into the 2000s, but in the 90s, living there, Oak Grove was a sketchy area. There was a lot of poor people. There was a lot of angsty, angry youth wandering around. My best friend Jason, who was like a year and a half older than me, when we would go walk around town, he would keep seeing kids and be like, hey, hey let's go this way. I, those, I, got, I got beef with those guys. I don't want to deal with them. And... That I remember us walking to the store one night. I, I want to say I was it was around this time. I was still like an eight or nine, walking to the store with Jason, who's like ten or eleven. And there was a legitimate like gang, like five kids who were a little bit older than us. And like as we were walking by him, Jason was like, "Let me do the talking if anything happens." And they stepped in front of us. And like, I'm a freaking eight, nine year old kid. And you know, one of the kids was like, "Hey, you want to mess with us?" And Jason's like, "No." And one of these kids, I remember the exact inflection in his voice, he pulled out a switchblade and went, Tch! and was like, want to mess with my blade? No joke. It's exactly how he said it. That's not a false memory. And Jason's like, no, I don't want to mess with you. And they were kind of just like, <laughs> and they let us go. And I was scared shitless. But we managed to go to the store and go an alternate route to go home. But that, 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 that was like the thing it was just a sketchy area you know there was a little crappy house right down the street from us it got shut down for being a meth house meth houses were popping up in the area it was just so there there was a lot of rambunctious youth roaming around that probably not responsible for the meth thing but other things um that goes into what because i still never got a full story as to what exactly happened um, I heard kind of through the the uh, grapevine, the classic, like someone's dad was smoking a cigarette and fell asleep and then it set 
fire to stuff. I have a bumblebee circling around me. Get out. Um, but I remember very well the gossip that was going around um, that day was there was a kid going down Oak Grove Boulevard, the main drag, which again, the stores are here and the house is right behind him and Oak Grove Boulevard just goes down the main drag through town. Old downtown Oak Grove. Um, obviously skipping school, you know, because school was in session. And there was claims that this kid was just riding down the street on a bicycle and he just looked up at the apartment house and he picked up a rock and just threw it at the house and it shattered a window. Um, and it went into somebody's television, like shattered the screen and sparked a fire somehow that way. That was what, that was the rumor I was hearing going around for how this fire actually started. I don't know for certain what sparked it, but I mean, it went up in flames real quick. And I think whichever unit the fire started in, nobody was home. So there was like a delay in anybody really noticing. It wouldn't surprise me if there was somebody that wasn't even, you know, I, you know, it was a rundown rooming house pretty much. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't even have functioning smoke detectors or if they had more than one fire extinguisher in there. And it was crazy. The smoke was just billowing. It got dark and black. Um, and I remember even when I finally got off school, like people just lying in the streets and my parents came to school to meet me to just be like, hey, we're okay. Because <laughs> I was freaking out in school. Like, you know, when I couldn't see anything because, you know, granted, there was Arista and Lee and there was a whole block between those two streets. The apartment house was this side of Arista and I lived on Lee. So I lived a whole block away. But I, you know, young kid, imagination running wild. I thought maybe this fire could reach my home because if you went in a straight line from that apartment house to my home, you'd be going from like a southeast to a northwesterly direction. There was probably about a four to five home length separating us. Now granted the fire would have had to leapfrog Arista and burn through our that people's houses that were across the fence from us, but still I was worried. That's, and so when my parents showed up and were like, it's fine, and I was able to look around and see, okay, the fire, fire hadn't even spread to the businesses below. But it was, it was chaos, because it was such a big house. And I remember that Ryan kid, who I remember was chuckling like crazy when he first heard about it and came back to school. Um, you could see after a little while, like, the reality of it was settling in, and all of a sudden he went from chuckling to just kind of, like, sullen and inconsolable. And it, it was, um... I remember us kids handling it pretty well. Like, we were excited, like, what's going on? Um, but we weren't, like, losing our minds. We weren't laughing. We, we were actually very compassionate towards this kid, and we were all baffled as to why he was, like, treating it as such a joke at first. And when he, he became, you know, much more sullen about it, all the kids in the class were really... Because this kid probably lost everything he owned, and he probably didn't own a whole lot to begin with. Um, and I don't think anybody died in the fire. I think everybody managed to get out. Um, since it you know, was a fire that happened probably around noon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the kids that lived there were probably all at school, and most of the people that lived there were probably at work. Um, but yeah, it was wild, and it made the papers all over the place. This massive fire that just took this big old house down scared the living hell out of me. And I, just, I just remember it was just chaos. Just kids running around, parents like... All the parents were wondering if this was going to get out of hand and this was going to end up like torching a huge chunk of town because once it leaps into the trees and starts leaping into multiple houses, now the firefighters have more shit to deal with and who knows if it's going to get out of control. Um, and fortunately it didn't, but that, that honestly was probably the most exciting thing that happened in my world, at least in my early days of going to elementary school, was the torching of that massive house right down the street from us. Yeah, because this, this house here, this nice house, this used to be all by itself. There was nothing behind it, and there was nothing next to it. There's another, like, thin structure uh, to the other side of this house. But this house used to just be by itself. And this is Lee, where Lee Avenue starts again. Again, crossing the school property, Lee Avenue. And it's, like, there's my apartments right there. And there's no trees left. This street was lined with trees when I was a kid. It was so beautiful. And it's all freaking gone now. 
fucking god this business is about it's so weird that there's like a business at the top of my street right here where these this like second to the last one there was a basketball hoop here that my friend kelly's parents put up and they watched over us that's where i found my love of basketball was shooting at the basketball hoop that was like right here yeah this wasn't here this used to nice truck this used to just be a field we'd play wiffle ball and hit home runs here yeah, old house here. So my, I think my friend's parents still live here. And there's this house, my friend Maria, and then later my friend Shayna lived here. My best friend in the whole wide world, from like late first grade to second grade, Jason, lived here. God, all of the trees are gone. There were trees here. There was trees there. There was this house was surrounded by trees. No, this isn't. Did they demo the house that was here? This looks like a new house. Ah. <sighs> Everything is freaking changed. I hate it. Because this is where I lived and it doesn't look remotely the same. Like it's been repaved. All of the... This was so beat up and beautiful. And yeah, there was a really cool house here. And I'm pretty sure they demoed it and tore all the trees out. <sighs> yeah, unit one right here. This first unit right here is where I lived. My friend Megan lived in unit five. Um best thing is the um little courtyard here looks beautiful but yeah right over this fence that was my backyard put a basketball hoop up played basketball there i don't think the place the windows have been changed in a long time but yeah this is the unit i lived in from october end of october 1992 till the start of march 2004 i lived here for 12 years this was my home and it it's, you know, if it wasn't for the structures, some of the structures that are here, this is another world to me. Mostly because all of the last time I came here, there's at least some trees left. But they're just, they're all gone. They're all freaking gone. living here because you, you turn and look this way and trees they're all still here beautiful trees everywhere as far as i can see but the only tree is this big one that's still left my old friend kelly's there used to be just trees there's trees in the driveway trees over the oh. <sighs> of course after the windstorm of 95 our landlord came out and hacked down about half of them she was all paranoid about further damage i'm just like you bitch <laughs> so that, again, that's where I lived until start of March 2004. I'm now going to show you where I lived from start of March 2004 till pretty much mid-May, mid to late May 2009, when I literally just left home because I couldn't stand living with my dad anymore, something I've talked about numerous times. My father, another person I'm really hoping I don't bump into, so for a little over five years, we lived. <laughs> There's a house down here that my mom thought was so cute. And she was like, God, I, I want to have that place one day. And it was brief. In fact, my teacher, Miss Chamoff, my third grade teacher, I'm pretty sure she lived in that house for a little while. And for a brief period, like in the mid 90s, it was available and we just never jumped on it. Well, fast forward like almost 10 years later and it became available again there was an elderly couple that that owned it and they rented it to us even though they the main guy hated my father which i mean big shocker so did everyone else and they rented us this house a whole house it's a small house but 
a whole house, eight, it was like 880 a month. And yeah, I'm showing, I'm showing how, how far I, how far I went from, from one new home to another by literally walking the distance from one to the other. And it barely takes a minute. By the way, cool story. This little courtyard here, it's called Papa Sloss Court. It's called Papa Sloss because apparently, this is the story I've heard, a guy named Papas got a hold of some of this land, paved this little stretch, thought he was going to build a bunch of homes and make a bunch of money off of it, and it ended up not working out for him, so he had to take a loss on the property. So it's called Papa's Loss Court. I don't know if that's a true story, but that's the story that I was told. It looks like there's a bunch of vehicles like parked right in front of my old house yeah and there's a camper so i'm probably not even gonna get a good view of it i'm just i'm gonna flip over to like the slow motion camera just so you can actually get a view of it Oh my god. I was half expecting. No, it's got. Oh god. Oh no, there's the halfway house. Oh my god, I have so much to discuss. But I'm not going to. I'm. Oh my god, I'm shut up. Yeah, there was a Dr. Scott whose house was here and it mostly burned down. And he had this big property. And now, no shocker, there's a bunch of new houses here. I wonder if this guy's associated with him worse all the times I choose to come and relive my past. They, I, I don't think, I don't even think they rebuilt it. I think they tore it down. No, so, my high school, no, not my, 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 my elementary school is gone. And then the home I lived in, which was such a cute little thing, but I, I knew this was gonna happen. Cause we had the biggest, greatest effing backyard anyone could ever ask for. And I just knew it was only a matter of time before our landlords, who again were elderly, passed away, and that was going to fall into the hands of somebody else, and they were going to see all that land, and they were going to do something. I'm surprised. It looks like they're just building another house there, like a slightly bigger one. They're literally in the midst of construction, which means it was probably only recently demolished. So, that's depressing. This is, like, I was already bummed about all the trees being gone, and now the freaking house that I lived in after that's gone. God, I'm getting old. <laughs> Everything from my past is disappearing. But yeah, those houses there. I was actually almost, I figured it couldn't possibly be the case because this was like, this happened like over, I think it was like at least 15 years ago. But that little line of houses, a little bit down across the street, there was that was kind of a big property and there was a house a little ways back from the road. And that's where Dr. Scott lived. Or at least that was the house he owned. And it caught fire, and I actually caught video of it. Because um, we were woken up, me and my parents were woken up in the middle of the night by, um, you know, scenes of, you know, the red flashing lights outside. And yeah, Dr. Scott's house is on fire. Side note, this little house here is where, what was his name? Neil Mast lived. He was the play-by-play. -play. He, was, he, he was the voice guy for my high school sporting events. You know, the guy that says, like, now coming in, number 22, blah, blah, you know? This is the house where he lived. I was so happy I would go to his house, or I'd pass by his house, and he would know he knew me. He'd like, hey, Steve, because he probably knew my name from track. Also, for those of you, I'm going to get back to the fire story in a second, but for those of you that don't know, I'm a major JFK assassination um, buff, and it just so happens, because I discovered my interest in that shortly after we moved to Oak Grove. Like within a month or two of us moving into the apartments up there. 
I started taking an interest in the JFK assassination. So those that, you know, even novice information, Lee Harvey Oswald, the guy that they say killed JFK, but didn't, uh, but that's, that's neither here nor there. He was killed on national television by a guy named Jack Ruby. Well, this is Lee Avenue, obviously that I lived on, Lee Harvey Oswald. But at this point, for the rest of the way that the road goes down, it's called Ruby Drive. So, like, what are the odds of that? That I become staunchly intrigued by something and the names have, like, just randomly the street's name just changes and it correlates in that way. So, yeah, those, those I, of course, I haven't walked through here in, like, five years. So, obviously, a lot changes over time. But, yeah, those houses up there, that's where, as far as I remember, the doctor's house was. And it sat there forever like again i think the fire happened probably like 2007 ish 2007 at the very latest early 2008 and the, even when i came up here like early 2016 with my girlfriend to show her around where i used to live that house was still sitting there with a big black hole in its roof and from what i understand a bunch of newspapers were in there. I don't know if they were being collected or, but there was just all these papers in there. So it was just constant fuel for this fire. And it actually took them hours to put it out, even though it was a single house fire. And it was surrounded by trees. Well, lucky it didn't get worse. But yeah, when I said a little earlier, I pointed out a house that's obviously been fixed up. And I was like, that was the halfway house. That's just what we called it. I don't know if it actually was a halfway house, but you know, it was just down from the doctor's house and the doctor had a son he's a guy I still see on the bus from time to time he just looks real messed up he's got kind of the bug eyes and he's just kind of like this all the time and very very bony and I, I want to say I heard I, I don't know but he hung out a lot with these people that stayed at that house there was Larry who was this bone thing guy and I'm I know some of them drank a lot of alcohol but a lot of them were like druggies and they were constantly just yelling and screaming shit at each other and we were in the house right up on the you know the ridge right above them so if we opened our bathroom window we could look down the hill right at their house and you could there was just constantly someone on the lawn yelling at someone there was this real tweaker lady that lived there and she would always just kind of come out randomly and i think she was married to the bony larry guy and she used to come out and be like damn it larry yeah and just 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 absolute chaos all the time but it was kind of live and let live they didn't really you know it's surprising you know they didn't really bother anybody and nobody really bothered them back they kind of just bothered each other you know we never noticed like stuff missing they weren't like stealing our stuff they weren't trying to you know scam money off of us so they could buy more drugs they just kind of had their own little house of insanity on our otherwise fairly quiet block i'm so pissed to see that my to see that it just recently happened like they're still building the new house there and while there's similarities to how the what their building looks to the house i lived in i don't i don't think they're just rebuilding it and making it bigger i think they tore it down it was an older cottage but it was so cute it was so nice for how simple and small it was but it has that big backyard all that property and that's you know dollar signs to some people <sighs> bummer it is what it is though what the freaking hell was that oh it's a pooch i heard like a burp, 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 burp. it's like somebody's engine not starting oh. That's kind of a lazy mutt. He's just kind of la lounged out, but just kind of like, woo, woo, woo. Right, so anyway, I'm coming to where Lee, which becomes Ruby, ends up here, which it ends at Risley Park, where I spent a lot of time as a kid. Ah, Risley Park. And then this is Swain Avenue. And then the next street down is Risley, which makes sense. Ah, I used to come out here and play basketball back in the day. There's a lot of people here so I'm not going to loaf around too much and actually I do need to backtrack a little bit but yeah I used to come play basketball here in the glory days um yeah just another haunt if you will oh man this is still here well before I before I depart I have to god yeah these are still here these haven't these were here when I was a kid but I remember climbing on this rock as a kid 
So I gotta at least give this some attention. This big rock. I remember when I used to take an effort to climb on this rock. So yeah, Risley Park, parcel of land donated, 1956 for public park use by Mrs. John Risley. Yeah, cause I think the Risleys were a fairly prominent local family. And again, Risley, yeah, Risley Avenue is the next street down. But yeah, it's one big thing I primarily remember to try to climb on that rock as a kid. All right, so now that we've seen, uh, well, I mean, a lot of the lost stuff from my adolescence, uh, one thing I want to do is I want to get up to the main drag, uh, kind of up by general area around Oak Grove Boulevard and um, McLaughlin because that's like the main hub of commerce. Like whenever we went to the store, we went up there. Like just everything we did, we went up there. And I might even make that like its own video, like an extra in addition to this video, like an added part as it were. But before I get to that, I'm actually heading up to where Arista starts again. Remember I told you that Arista is kind of an, an interesting route. There was the stretch I was by earlier over when I was like checking out my old, the old uh, field and stuff. That's Arista, but then Arista ends and it kind of generally starts again, but it, it goes from being Arista going like this to Arista going like that. And it's actually a road that's split in two. And here's why. You see Arista splits in two because we've rounded about and returned once again to the trolley trail, which runs through the middle of it. So, you know, this road's been here a long time, but yeah. And what's interesting is you've got this part and then you cross the, you know, this is where the old trolley went through and you've got the other part of Arista. Now, logistically, you'd think, okay, this side is one way this way. That side is one way that way. No, they're actually both two ways, which <laughs> doesn't seem like the best idea, but uh, anyway, so yeah, we're across the trolley trail and Arista becomes two. And oh, this is like one of everybody in town would like take notice of this house. In fact, this house caught fire a while back, but fortunately only minimal damage was done. But it's because like you can see it from anywhere down here. So it's this really just gorgeous, iconic house in this neighborhood. Ooh. And there comes a gentle breeze. So I just did that little side video, taking a look up and down McLaughlin at some of my old haunts, if you could even call them that. And there's the old Oak Grove Theater, the sign sticking up at a, from behind there. Awesome historical theater, I love it. And I wanna make my way off of the main drag back this way, because I didn't really have a lot going on this side of McLaughlin growing up, except my high school's a little ways down there and off that way. This is where the, um, there was a Denny's here. I've referenced this in another video. By the way, quick reference, just this is the Oak Lodge Library. Cute little library, loved going here, like most libraries. But yeah, there was right, right here, there was a Denny's that became, it was a Panda, not a Panda Express, but a Panda Buffet. And this is the Denny's where out in the parking lot in the middle of the night, back in the summer of 1987. I've done a three-part documentary about him, so go watch it if you haven't. But this is where infamous Oregon serial killer Dayton Lee Roy Rogers killed his last victim, was behind the Denny's in 1987. And I came here and videoed for that. And one of my earliest videos that still gets views and gets voted down on a lot because I didn't really know how to make vlogs back then. I did a video when I found out a serial killer had operated so close to where I lived. And it's a horrible video because I spent half the video just talking about what used to be here, like what I just did. But again, this isn't a serial killer video. And there's a fence here now, that's interesting. You could always just go through here. When I was a kid, there must be some special business here now. What's so special about you, Latin multi-service? I was gonna cut through here. That's fine, I can just go to Vineyard. But yeah, so the murder would have happened somewhere kind of along where the backside of this wall is, somewhere in here, in this vicinity. And he'd already killed several other women 
but because he decided to do this next to a restaurant that happened to have um you know was open 24 hours there was actually a lot of people eating here even though i think it was like three something in the morning <sighs> so people heard the screams of uh jennifer lisa smith who was his last victim and he fled the scene but a guy chased after him down mclaughlin and got close enough to where he got his plate number and a description of the vehicle and i mean at that point it was easy for the police to figure out who owned the vehicle they went found him he was at his uh rogers was at his um he ran like a little uh like car repair engine repair kind of shop down on the edge of woodburn he lived in canby technically um even though he lived a little ways outside of town and yeah when the police showed up there he kind of acted chill but they found all this evidence that he had just been involved in a murder i don't know there's not really a sidewalk there so i'm gonna do the uh the portlandy thing and just kind of cut through here and vineyard hello vineyard and we'll continue our oak grove adventures or what little is left of them so I really don't have a whole lot left to do now that I'm getting more towards kind of the southern end edge of what I kind of considered Oak Grove. But I don't need you on anymore, I hope. I am getting closer and closer to where the church was, where I went to church and lived for many years and didn't have a blow up falling out, but it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. They probably don't think it was that big of a deal, but from my side, it was not pretty. But yeah, so I'm on Vineyard. I'm walking west now, kind of getting back towards River Road and all of that. And I might go down the trolley trail, place that I went down. I went down a lot when I lived at the church, but also went down a bit on my bike when I was younger. Oh, look at that. That's cute. So I went past him on Arista went across Arista, went up there, wrapped around, and I made my way back down to the old trolley trail again. At least, that's what it used to be. Because, yeah, so if you go literally just down and around the corner, that's where Arista uh, Drive ends, kind of at Concord Road that I passed a little earlier. Just a little back that way, and I'd go that way. There's... Ah. See, now I'm debating... Um, I think I'm going to go this way. I think I'm, the main reason I wanted to go that way was really, I mean, because I've gone through there a lot. So I kind of have a connection to it, but it's more a later years connection to it. But yeah, if you go that down that path enough and you come out at Rothy, people call it Rothy. I call it Rothy because I think it sounds better. Um, and then Rothy Road is the road that my high school is on, on the other side of McLaughlin. But on this side of McLaughlin, if you come out on that path, just a little ways down that way at uh, Rothy Road, I just called it Rothy after, oh yeah, that's, never mind, that is how I call it, <laughs> whatever. There's like a, just kind of a little building there, I don't know, I'm doing like, I don't know if they do like mechanical stuff or car stuff there now. Anyway, just kind of a nondescript structure there. Uh, Bob's Red Mill, if you've ever heard of them, like I know Bob's Red Mill is a big thing in the Portland area, but I know his products sell all over the place it sells a lot of like really healthy grains and oats and things like that high-end oatmeal steel cut oats things like that um but his original the, the place that he currently has is up in milwaukee he's a big big place there where you can like go and eat and all that stuff but his original spot was that little building that sits there. It's kind of this nondescript thing, but his original Bob's Red Mill opened there. That was really the only thing making me want to go that way. Um, I feel like I went down River Road a lot more as a youngin, and right up across the ridge here is River Road. So here we are. We're coming out. This is Vineyard ending at River Road. And River Road, you know, McLaughlin is the main highway through. This is kind of the one other main route through. There's kind of River Road runs on this side to the east, or no, to the west side of McLaughlin. And then to the east side of McLaughlin, it's kind of Oatfield Road. 
I spent a lot of my a lot of my life going up and down this stretch of river road that being said I might see someone I don't want to see doubtful but possible so it's the return of the shades and one place I really wanted to stop at because it's way back there where River Road kind of turns. I didn't want to stop by Riverside Elementary School. Um, but it's just, it's too far back that way and I'm going this way. But I gotta at least mention it. Like, some of my first youth basketball games I ever played, I played there. And um, I just have little random ties to that school. And there's a road that goes down next to it and behind it. And then it just kind of dead end, so it's this really quiet dead end road off behind the elementary school. So it's a good place to go if you want quiet and you especially don't want traffic. What I'm getting at is two movies that I've done. I actually filmed important sequences, or at least significant in terms of time, sequences for films I did. One was a film I did with my friend Laura, where the whole concept is you've gone to the store and bought ice cream, all you need to do is get it home, get it in your freezer, and then it will stay nice and cold. And then all this crap happens to her on her way home, and her tire supposedly blows out, and all this stuff happens on this one stretch of road. Well, that's the road that's behind the elementary school. And then I filmed a significant scene for the film I, a film I did, uh, Runaway Highway, where there's this important kind of emotional phone call happening between these people. So I literally just needed a spot for this guy to be stopped, where he could talk on the phone, and we don't have to worry about... Well, the most important thing I had to worry about was I couldn't have traffic coming the opposite way of him because he was supposed to be sitting at like the end of a road looking into a river. Like the idea was maybe this guy's gonna drive his car into the river. So the implication had to be that even though we weren't right there because it's a place, it's like a little place where people back their boats in, we couldn't just park there and block the whole thing off to shoot this scene. So I needed another spot and a spot where I knew cars weren't going to be going the opposite direction of him because where would those cars be coming from they'd have to be driving out of the river so yeah S significant scenes i filmed on that little back road that's right behind uh, riverside elementary back there eh. just thought you'd like to know it ain't childhood stuff so much but it is part of my my upbringing around here which is nice to see to see trees. <laughs> uh, all the trees are gone by where I used to live and then the place I lived after that is gone. My elementary school's gone. My middle school was built in the mid thirties so it's probably gonna be gone someday too. Progress is progress but it sucks when the way that the world changes, changes in a way that those things that you have deep connections to way back in your childhood just vanish. You come to expect that when you're like 60 or whatever. Uh, the old Morrow's Grocery is closing down. I used to go there as a kid back in 1963. Like, but I'm only 36. Ah, and I'm losing them all. This is supposed to be a happy video. I was supposed to be happy today. <laughs> God, I forget how little. I'm getting up here and I'm like, I'm almost near my high school. I'm almost to the church. Like, I don't even think, I don't think I'm even really in Oak Grove anymore, if we're being honest. Hey, bus stop. Um, what if they're ever gonna do anything with this property? I mean, I like that there's just an open field here, but anyway, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Once you cross Concord and Vineyard back there where I was, I don't have as many connections to here up until like high school. I mean, this is still an area that I frequently went through like growing up. But I mean, other than driving to go see something, there really wasn't a lot. And I know the next road up here is Rothy. Um, and I thought about going to my high school getting some video of that but I want to save that for another day because I actually have 
a couple things in relation to my high school that I want to film. So I'm just going to kind of do that on its own day. So I'd have to go down Raleigh and downhill and uphill way over there. So I've been walking for about three hours now and I really don't want to do that. <laughs> it's really used to be a bunch of trees by this house. Anyway, here's Rothy going down, down, down. And it goes down and up. I can actually see the theater of my high school from here. <laughs> Right there, that's the theater. That little tealish thing. But yeah, you go down Rothy, and then go way back up to get to the school. And right down where it kind of levels off down there, that's where Bob's Big Mill, or Bob's Red Mill. <laughs> Was I thinking of Bob's Big Boys? I don't know. So, yeah, you go down my high school's a little ways that way. Well, it's where I went to high school. Man. I just pause briefly to take a look at the old evangelical center that, you know, it used to be over here and now it's all housing. That was a trip. Did a little video of that. That'll be on my channel. I'll be comparing video that I took of the place when the old kind of abandoned evangelical center was there and then how it looks now. And okay. All I'm trying to do everything perfectly. Uh, mask on. This is a historical marker this way. What historical marker? Historical marker for what? For the evangelical center you destroyed? Actually, they might be referencing that thing I looked at. <laughs> there was like a, a thing there earlier. But anyway, all the long hair, the glasses, the mask, I think it's enough that if anybody from the church sees me, they won't know it's me. I can actually see the rooftop of the church over there, so. I'm going to hustle through here pretty dang quick. God, I can't see. Oh, hello, pooch. Hello. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. You're a tall drink of water. So, I mean, we're in Jennings Lodge now. We're not even in Oak Grove. I just knew I was going to end up this way and kind of... My adventure would more or less come to an end in this region which actually makes sense because my old church which is literally just the other side of these houses that's the next place that i had like full and complete housing after i left uh my home which is now demolished son of a bitch when i left home in may 2009 i lived with my mom for a few months even though i wasn't supposed to because she wasn't supposed to have anybody else living with her but you know i was desperate and then, uh, late in 2009, I moved in there. I lived there for several years before moving in with my friend Nick. And, you know, I pretty much started doing um, YouTube stuff. Uh, Pre-Steve the Amateur Story and stuff, but the stuff I do now. Um, about six months before I moved away from the rectory home at the church. So, pretty much you've... You know, if you follow my channel, you've been with me from that point till now. So, with the February video, or the February, the Fairview video, and this one, you're kind of almost getting up to date with my life, and generally, where I have lived. And, again, even though it's not in Oak Grove, it is something that wowed me as a kid, even though it's gone now. It's not the Jennings Lodge School, but I do love this school. It's simple, but it's definitely got some great historic value. But no, I'm going down to the end of the end of the street here where it turns because I want to bring you one last. I mean, the th <laughs> the place that I loved that was there is gone now. So I'm not showing you the exact spot, but a place of actually pretty serious historical significance was located there, and it was there. It had been closed down. It was abandoned. God, I wish I was old enough to hurt that at the time because it didn't get... To, but So when I was a little kid, you know, first moved here, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever, this place was still here. So I remember seeing it as a kid and loving it, even though I didn't even know what it was used for. So it does tie in. It's a great little memory of my childhood. So it does totally tie into purpose of this video 
It's the intersection of this is River Road and Meldrum. This is where I had my uh, first kind of serious and last car accident because some dumb idiot decided to blow through this stop sign. You'll note there's a stop sign there. There was in 2006 as well. She rolled right through it, went right into my bumper, and we just got stuck right here. And she tried to play the whole, oh, I can't feel my legs crap. And then tried to play, when she was able to stand up, tried to play the whole, I can't move my arms crap. And literally tried to act like I was responsible when she blew a stop sign and just wouldn't admit it. She told me that my lights weren't on and that's why she rolled in front of me when I actively watched her just blow through. So, girl, I had a car accident, wherever you are, uh, screw you. Seriously, I, I have no qualms about trash talking you. You could have killed me. <laughs> and that being said, we're almost to this point where River Road kind of cuts over a little bit, and that's where we'll finish things. And uh, this isn't it either, but here's Burgerville at Glen Echo and McLaughlin. Technically, my first ever job was I was hired to work at this Burgerville, but I saw the conditions in the back, freaked me out because I'd never had a job before, and I ceased communications with them, never called them back, and never actually worked there, but I was officially hired. So technically, it was my first job. But uh, from a distance, you see this string of houses over here. I think that's that area has a name, like it's the castle something, but over there where these houses are, kind of right in this area, is where the castle restaurant was. And it was literally, it was a castle and it was still here. It was all abandoned by the time I lived here, but it still stood there through, I think most of the nineties at least. And it was a big deal. Like it was this, like you see all this and it's, you know, commercial over here, but it's like residential over there. And you think, how was there like a, like any kind of commerce over here, but there was a restaurant shaped like a freaking castle over here. And it was no joke. It was a very popular place. Um, I well, didn't they have their own band? I think they had their own band, but like, like Sammy Davis Jr. performed here. I'm pretty sure Ella Fitzgerald performed here. Like this was no joke. This was a real deal, popular in demand gathering spot, but you know, it closed down, it sat here falling apart for years, and it finally got demolished. And like most things, it got replaced with some stupid houses. Pretty much where this one house is, this house right here, it's pretty much where the castle restaurant was. Rest in peace. And I wanna say there was something, because I think the name of this little housing area has something to do I thought there was like a sign here, but I guess just kind of just says OC on it. I don't know, but I want to say it said like this is called the castle something as like an homage. But I wonder if like some of these bricks that are in here are because, you know, it was like a castle. It was made of these big stone bricks. Wondering if maybe, probably not, maybe, I don't know. Some of these were from the castle itself. I don't know, but it was here. I think I'm far enough from anybody who's gonna know me. But anyway, I mean, since I'm not even in Oak Grove anymore, I guess we'll call that a wrap on my return home to Oak Grove. Again, a bit of a follow-up to my uh, going back to Fairview and looking at my life before my life here in the Oak Grove area, south of Portland the general area between Portland and Oregon City, more or less. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by, for coming along for me on this second ride back into my childhood, back into nostalgia. And I am realizing I'm living, or no, I'm walking within a block of where my dad, at least as far as I know, last lived. So 
maybe a little, a little early to be taking the glasses off because I do not want him to recognize me. Because if he sees me and I see him, I'm going to keep walking. Sorry, bruh. You screwed up one too many times, son. So, anyway, as I was saying, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel or just haven't gotten around to it, remember to like, share, subscribe. I'm really trying to keep my channel growing bit by bit by bit by bit. I'm still a very small channel, but I'm putting a lot of content out there just because I love it. <laughs> it's really kind of the beginning and the end of it. I also have a Patreon if you want to help me out there a little bit. It makes this job that I'm doing a little bit easier to do. The link to that is in the description with this video as well as the links to a Facebook page I have for my channel, Instagram, and a Reddit subreddit page. All those links in the description with this video and all that said one more time from the heart thank you so much for stopping by this has been steve the amateur historian